Hey guys, welcome back to Beach and Fishing. Paul here with you again today. And good news to start with, if any of you have seen my last couple of videos, the sun's out. We've had so much rain here that I spent more time shooting videos and writing posts than I actually have out on the beach or in the kayak. So hopefully I can change that this week. But anyway, regardless, Beach and Fishing is my site aimed at fishing. What I like about fishing, what I like to use, what I don't like to use, how it works. Um, interactive as much as possible because as I always mention in all of my posts, the thing I love about it is that everybody has a different idea and a different opinion. I This is how my life is. I went to a friend's place for a couple of drinks yesterday afternoon and three of us spent I reckon 20 minutes discussing the pros and cons of different knots to tie braid to mono which I will show you in another post because we always do things differently and they all work so all good. Anyway, as I'm recording this video, it's coming into winter here, which means we do a lot more night fishing, mainly for the fact that the species we chase over winter only come through in winter. Uh, Dewfish, tailor, some salmon, uh, sometimes get some tuna off the beach, and lots of other little more the bottom dwelling fish come through in winter, mainly for the fact that the weather's warmer. The water, sorry, is warmer near the coast. So they come in close, they're there all year round, obviously, but they come in closer to the coast when the weather is when the weather is colder and the water is warmer closer to the surface closer to the edge and also at night they venture in even closer to the to the beach which is why a lot of people like to fish at night the fish will go into shallower water because they feel safer they will feed in the shallow water chasing the smaller bait fish which is where if you're using a lure or some live bait fish or even some pilchers or something like that you can get some more fish and yeah, just seems to be the way to go. Other people only ever go in the daytime, but when we're chasing certain species, we like to go at night on a full moon and we tend to do a lot better then. So as we run through, this is what I like to do. And this is what over time I have got myself ready to do when it comes to night fishing. The first thing I always do is go and scope out the beach during the day. Um, in other posts, and I've got a picture in my in this post, I'll show you what I mean about a gutter. During the day, uh, you look for a shore, then there's a dark line there, and then a sandbank there. That is a gutter. And in the daytime, we tend to fish in those. Or we can fish around rocks, or we can do this, that, and the otherwise. At night, obviously it's harder to see those structures, and it's harder to see where the gutters or the holes or anything like that is. So we tend to then go by guess or go by the knowledge of what we have on the beach. So we scope out the beach in a day, we look for where the gutters are, we look for, for where the reefs and the rocks are. There are some rocks where we, on our local beach, we avoid them at night, and mainly because you can't see them and just get so many snags. So we know where the gutters are, but we also look for areas where there's a big longer shore break without a gutter, so a longer sandbar maybe on the, on the edge. That's because the smaller, fish, the bigger fish will come into those areas at night. And if we can stay out of the big surf at night, because big surf, you just can't always see where your lines ends up. I mean, there's nothing worse than casting out and then you gotta go to retrieve your, your line and realize that you've been on the beach for the last 20 minutes anyway, because it's just gone from the surf straight in. So we tend to avoid bigger surf. So we'll look for those sort of things as well. So if you check out the beach during the day, it's gonna give you a good idea on the areas you can fish at at night. You've got some more options at night you don't have during the day, but you also wanna make sure that you're avoiding rocks and and stuff like that. Second option, um, I mentioned this, I wrote about this very recently, <coughs> excuse me, take a headlamp. In winter, I take a beanie headlamp. This has gone flat, I think I haven't charged it since, but this is a beanie with a lamp on the front there, um, which is good in winter. I also have a hat clip one, which clips onto the edge of a hat, and I haven't got in here, because I actually was going to use it on the weekend, but it started raining again, so. There you go. Um, but it clips onto the peak of a, of a cap, which I use at night as well. Fishing is a two-handed option and go back and have a look at my post on the best headlamps for fishing. I explain a lot more in there, but fishing is a two-handed option, whether you're baiting a hook, whether you're changing a lure, whether you're doing this, that, or otherwise, you will want two hands. Headlamp gives you those two hands, gives you the light. There's other advantages to it too for safety, which we'll talk about in a second where they have red lights. And lights actually attract some fish. 
So some headlamps have little green lights or little blue lights on them, and they're actually supposedly will attract fish closer to the where the light is. So that can be something that you can use. I've seen guys put little torches in the on the edge of the water, tie it to a to a stake on the beach, and just throw that in the edge of the water to try and attract fish in closer to the light. I haven't done it myself, and I can't guarantee it. I can't tell you whether it works or otherwise. For me, we burly up every now and then, but I haven't tried the light in the water. I'll have to try it and see how it goes. But light, take a good headlamp with you. Third option, take more than one rod. In the daytime, I have one rod, which I take down and I throw in the water and I either cast, flick around with a lure, or I drop it in the gutter. It's an 11 foot rod, but it's nice and light and it can handle long casting with heavy lures or it can handle short bait and it's a it's a really really good one actually i'll do another post next so i haven't had it long but it's quite a good one at night i tend to take a couple of rods i have one of them here this one is i've shown this a few times this is a big heavy rod it's a 13 foot it's carbon which means it's nice and light to hold but it's heavy set heavy action uh uh fast power uh, heavy power sorry fast action which means it's supposed to cast quite well. It doesn't because it's just so heavy. Once you put a, a big reel on there and, and fill it up with a heavy sinker, it holds the sinker and everything well, but it just doesn't cast very far, this one. But it's good for just throwing into the into the gutter or just on you know a little bit further out on the edge, maybe the first run of waves. Uh, heavy sinker, heavy bait, and it just sits in the rod holder and it hardly moves. It's perfect for that. Terrible for using with a lure or just flicking around with live bait. So I take that at night, then I either take a little, I don't normally just take my little seven foot estuary rod and flick around with a lure because I can cast that quite far or just put a smaller bait in the in a gutter or on a shore break and see what I can go there. But effectively, it goes back to what I talked about before. You've got more options at night because the fish will come closer to the shore. So if you're looking at a like if you're fishing just in a, a in a you know it's a, almost like a small you know the, the where you get the little areas in the beach the kids play in just the little tiny gutters they're really good at night if you can find one of them and you don't need a big massive rod to get into there so take that sometimes so you'll find that there's nothing there and the fish are biting out the back which is where you need the bigger rod so take more than one rod you generally use heavier sinkers and uh, lures at night than you do during the day. So that may adjust the reason for having more than one rod as well. As I said, that one there can handle a really heavy lure. So can my S, my general beach fishing rod. The little flicky rod that I have can't. It, it doesn't, it's not big enough to handle the big lures. So it almost snaps a rod, it gets too whipping, it just doesn't do anything, it tangles, bird nests, you name it, it happens. Um, so more than one rod because at night you might want to change your conditions. The conditions will change quite quickly and you're going to go from there. Number four, this is something that I've come about mainly because as I'm getting older, I find it hard to, even with a headlamp, trying to see at night, tying knots and stuff. If you, if, you are cha if you are changing conditions, quite often you'll have, the guys will say, oh, we're getting tighter at the back, so we will then change all our lures and go out there. So if you've got to retie all that sort of stuff, it can be, it's hard at night. So what I do is I'll show you on the post here, what I do, as a headlamp, for those of you who are not used to looking at headlamps, um, I take some pre-tied rigs. So one rig that I like to use is just a straightforward leader rig where you have the sinker. That's normally not sitting there, obviously. I've just left that little bit of line on so you can see where the sinker sits. Sinker, swivel, leader, hook. Sinker sits on the ground, hook floats around or sits on the ground, the bottom feeding fish will get it. That's the stock standard um, rig that I use for a lot of different types of fishing. However, if I've got a nice big sinker, big swivel and big hook on there, um, get a lot of stingrays, because stingrays scoop along the bottom where we fish as well. So I then change my rig to be, that's a triple sinker, a hook, and that there, I've just put a star sinker, a triple swivel, sorry, and then I just put the star sinker on the bottom there just to show you how it sits. That's actually a loop that I tie on the end of the line. And that means that I can change this, the sinkers depending on what weight I need quite quickly. So I do that. A lot of people do that with the hooks as well. They'll just tie a little loop on there. So you can, we do that for out in the boats. We'll use a, a triple or even a quadruple swivel 
or do the old fashioned line and tie that on. Um, I'm not very good at that knot, so I tend to use the swivels. Um, different opinions there as well. But if you put that loop on, you can actually swap that hook on and off quite easily as well if you want bigger hooks or smaller hooks um, and turn the swivel. But I, I'll take three or four of them and I'll take three or four of them. These I normally have a slightly different size swivel. I'll have a small, medium and large and same with hook, small, medium and large hook. I don't use the lure, the, the um, loop type on that one. I just tie it straight too. And if I've got three or four of them with me, all I need to do then if I want to swap over is just cut it, re-loop re, um, the, the sinker on and then just tie the one knot. Everything else is pre-tied. At night, trust me, it just makes things that much easier for you to have those rigs set up. I mean, obviously, they're the rigs I like to use for what we chase. You can use whatever rig you like. Some guys that I fish with use different rigs. Um, if you're putting, like if you've got just the hook and the and the sinker straight on the bottom, which some guys use if they're around, there's rocks and stuff, you get less um, snags with rigs set up that way. Obviously, you can't do it then. But whatever rig you like to use, and there's hundreds of them out there, um, do a couple of preset ones. Just saves you time. Some people do that during the day. We do it out in a kayak as well. It's just a quicker sit in front of the TV watching a football with a beer and set up all your rigs and then off you go. Sounds like Fish Nerd City, doesn't it? But it saves me a lot of time. And my final option here for fishing at night is safety. Now, I've mentioned a couple of times already that you can't always see the gutters. You can't see the, the structure in the, in the surf. So go down and check it out during the day. At night, you can't see weather very well either. And conditions on a beach. Any of you who spend any who live at a co live in a coastal area will tell you that the weather changes so quickly. The wind will get up, or the rain will just suddenly hit, or it'll get suddenly get really hot, or you name it, it can happen. The surf can suddenly double in size, especially if the tides come in. You can get caught on a high if you're fishing to the high tide. You can get caught with no no beach, anything like that. So just make sure that you've got some safety aspects covered. Have some light with you. I mentioned headbands before, headlamps before. They've got, I'd often got red lights on them so you can leave them on and people can find you. If not, take another light that you can set up so people can find you. Put your cell phone, your mobile phone in a, in a waterproof container and have that in your fishing backpack. Um, take some water, take a warm jacket, take some food. And most importantly, if you're going by yourself, let someone know that you are there. That way, if, if you haven't heard from you for a little while, they know where to come and find you. That's it, guys. That's my five tips for night fishing. There's a few other things that we can do and look around. I might update this post as I, as I come to think of them as we venture into our night fishing. But they're my five tips for now. If you have any questions with that, let me know. That's it guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe to my channel below. If you That way I can keep you up to date with everything to do with my fishing exploits. Um, if you're watching within the post, if you have any questions to do with anything that I've talked about, difference of opinions, if there's other things you do for night fishing, other things that I've mentioned you think don't work or don't work for you, absolutely would love to hear from you below and we can have a chat. Thanks guys, talk to you soon. Happy fishing. Bye.